Welcome back friends. We are talking about RNA editing mechanisms in higher eukaryotes. We have talked about the mechanism presented uh, by inside the mitochondria of eukaryotic systems like angiosperm, uh, plant mitochondria and obviously eukaryotic mitochondria. And also we have seen this process in uh, the modification of cytosine to uracil in case of ApoB lipoprotein of our body of uh, animal or mammalian cell and now we'll be talking about the modification from adenosine to inosine okay this is a kind of modification also we can find in higher eukaryotes like mammals now this type of modification can also be carried out by set of enzymes and form a editosome complex now usually what you've discussed about the modification of c2u and obviously the change or incorporation of uridine is onto the mrna sequences okay most of the time they talked about the mRNA sequences but now in this video we'll be talking about this uh, modification of A2I which usually observed during the modification of tRNA sequences or the RNA sequences which is having much more uh, two-dimensional and three-dimensional conformations okay because we know that the RNA is also having a secondary structure now uh, this A2I modification usually occurs in the secondary structure region of RNA modifications and the secondary structure modification that we usually get is in tRNAs right so here so the modification so the modification that we get is from A to I and usually this modification tends to occur in secondary structure region secondary structure region and usually the secondary structure region is found in tRNA okay so most of the case we are going to find this modifications in tRNA but also in mRNA where we are having secondary structure like stem loop structure in RNA and also other type of structure hairpin structure we are going to see this type of modification okay now in this type of modification again so let me tell you so if this is a RNA sequence now there is a segment of say A which is to be modified now due to the modification due to the secondary structure as conformation what we can get suppose we get a structure of RNA like that for example this is the RNA structure we are having 5 prime we are having a 3 prime so 5 prime 3 prime suppose here it is and the structure is something like that so as a result of this secondary region there is say A or 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 let's say let's uh, make it a less complex actually so let's say here we are having a, a RNA region and here here we are having stem loops region structures and here we have the bulge out structures like that so and say this is the RNA of our interest 5 prime 3 prime now here is our adenosine okay so say this is the adenosine of our interest which is to be modified now remember in this part of the addition there is a there are different secondary conformations that are coming out from different sites in this type of situations when you need to modify this a to i a set of proteins which are called adar let me write it it's a called adar these proteins will come now this is a abbreviation definitely the full name is dsrna dependent deaminase okay this is called dsRNA dependent deaminase enzyme now this so simply it is a deaminase right that means again if you are having adenine it is having an amino group with it and if we cleave this amino group out of this uh, picture we get so this is completely this is totally adenine so let me tell you so say this is a base somehow it is added with NH2 this whole thing is called as adenine now due to the removal of this NH2 from this base structure what we get is inosine right or I so deamination of adenine will lead to the formation of inosine now inosine is a type of uh, base which can uh, literally pair with rest of other four bases so it can make bonds with it then okay it's having the versatility in bond creation and but this inosine will be read as guanine during the translation 
because if suppose uh, there is in the codon region if there is a i i uh, a i c d this is if this is the sequence that is present they will depict as a g c because i denotes for g during the protein translation okay now in this case what we get adenine sit there and there is a enzyme called ds rna dependent deaminase so there is no region for dna to control this en enzymes this is completely most of the cases i must tell you these proteins which are helping in the rna editing or rna modification either they are rna uh, enzymes because sometimes rnas are acting as uh, ribozymes to catalyze the reactions those are called self uh, catalyzing reactions example as splicing and obviously sometimes there are some proteins short proteins which are tagged or combined with rna called ribonucleoproteins most of the cases so those proteins usually functions in a rna dependent fashion but not the dna dependent fashion again in this case this this protein adder is also an rna dependent enzyme that will come and will bind with this region now adder is having two different special domain to bind with so if i draw adder so let me draw it let's say if this is the adder so it is having two different sections so let me say here it is and say here it is so these are the two different binding region of adder so if this is adder one region is to bind with the adenosine region section another region is to bind with ds rna now remember this is a double stranded rna dependent enzyme so if there is a linear rna which is always single stranded it cannot activate adder so for the activation of adder it requires a double stranded pair of rna the double stranded complex of rna usually is found in the secondary structure of the rna right so that's why i have told you that this type of process is usually seen in case of the secondary structure like the trnas most of the case so say here it is a so this adder will come in it will bind with this a section there using its two domain here it comes one domain using this domain one so this is the domain one it will bind with the adenosine which is to be modified and using another domain this is called ds rna binding domain okay using this domain it binds with the ds rna so remember this is the rna segment so it binds with the ds rna so using two of its uh, domains it will bind with two of this important sections so it will bind in this place properly then it will modify this a to i by delete by deleting this amino group from this so it will cleave this amino group cleave it out then this adenosine will be converted into inosine okay now this type of conversion usually uh, is it, this, this type of conversion seen in eukaryotic system glut receptors if you remember biochemical pathway of glut receptor that this glut receptors are glucose transporters if you remember glut or glut whatever you can say g l u t or glucose transporters Now this glucose transporter is a type of receptor that usually uh, found in the cell. So if this is the cell, glucose transporter receptors are always or glutes are always present inside. So these are the glutes that are present inside vehicle. Now once the enzyme come and hit this place, once glucose come and hit the receptor regions uh, in somewhere. So if I draw this structure, so this is the cell surface. These are the receptors. Now the signal is coming and blocked into this particular place the signal usually as insulin now one insulin hormone come in and bind with this particular glut uh, bind this particular receptor it will trigger some signaling event some downstream signaling cascade which will tell this vesicle to go and fuse with the membrane so that after this what we get we are fused glut receptors we get lots and lots of glut receptors open so that glucose will come and enter right so when there is a high concentration of glucose present in our blood insulin come in and it will signal by attaching with this red receptor it will provide some signal to this glut receptor to tell this go there are a lot of glucose present in blood stream that we need to internalize them so the glut receptor will go and fuse with the cell surface so that it can 
make the entry of glucose from bloodstream inside the cell right so these are the role of GLUT receptors now we can see this kind of modification of adenosine to inosine in GLUT receptors okay now these modifications are important in many cases because it can lead to the variations of different type of GLUT receptors because we need to have different GLUT receptors remember there are many varieties GLUT2, GLUT4 different varieties of GLUT receptors present sometimes the GLUT receptor present uh, in our liver is different than the GLUT receptor present in our uh, other cells like brain because uh, the way they work is different so that's that's why we are having different variety of this receptor using this RNA editing mechanism okay so that's it I hope that's helpful thank you